Greetings to everyone. For those of you who have watched some of my videos before, it's probably clear that I prefer to use a balanced connections where it's possible. After all, I work in a professional environment where balanced connections are standard. So I decided to make a short educational video to show you the difference between balanced and unbalanced connections. It is my first video of this kind, so feel free to express your opinion about it by clicking like or dislike button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them in the comments below. An unbalanced cable consists of two connectors with two conductors each, connected by two wires inside the cable, a signal wire and a ground wire. Inside the cable itself, the signal wire is typically in the center of the cable with the ground wire surrounding it. The ground wire serves two functions. It carries part of the audio signal and serves to shield the main signal wire to some degree from outside interference from noise such as hum from lights and transformers, as well as radio frequency interference that comes from TV and radio transmitters. It does a decent job of rejecting noise, but unfortunately the wire itself also acts like an antenna and picks up noise. Most common connector standards are RCA, used for many AV components, and 1 4 inch TS jack, or also known as phone plug. Unbalanced cables work great for connecting AV components, for instance, but because they are not very good at suppressing noise from outside interference, unbalanced cables should have a maximum length of 15 to 20 feet, or 4 to 6 meters. A balanced cable, by contrast, has three conductors in the connector and three wires in the cable. Two signal wires plus a separate ground wire. As in the unbalanced cable, the ground wire still surrounds the signal wires and is used as a shield against interference. But what makes a balanced cable special is the way the gear utilizes that extra signal wire. Balanced cables use two signal wires. Both carry a copy of the signal, but the two copies are sent with their polarity reversed. If you sum two signals that are identical but are in reverse polarity, the signals cancel out, leaving you with silence. So why would you want audio gear that flips the polarity of your signal? In this case, because the receiving gear will flip the inverted signal back into its original orientation. But because both copies of the signal picked up the same noise as they traveled along the cable, and that noise is identical on the two wires in the cable, flipping the polarity of what arrives at the receiving gear will produce the original signal intact and noise which is now has reversed polarity. Summing that gives you a welcome result, signal that is preserved and noise that is cancelled. Because of this, balanced cables can support much longer runs, 100 meters or 330 feet or more. Though even shorter runs will often use balanced wiring to protect against noise. The wiring for microphones and the interconnect cables between consoles signal processors and amplifiers, etc. in a pro sound systems or recording studio environment are typically balanced. Standard connectors designed for use with balanced signals are XLR and TRS jacks. I based my explanation on the article which I read on avium.com. I really recommend this article if you want to study this topic more carefully. Link you will find in the description. This is it for this video, thanks for watching, goodbye.